Things to consider before bringing a pet on the truck with you. This is Chibi right here, so. Things to consider before you do what we do. And this little guy. Let's go, man. All right, I'm coming to you from the floor of the hotel room. It is what it is, man. We just out here about to check out right now, about to get going. Uh, got some new stuff bubbling, so we're excited about that. But we want to slide through right quick and, I guess, give a quick, brief breakdown of things. People who have pets and love pets, like many of us do, and want to bring them on the truck with you. Just a few things to think about before you do that. Pros and cons, so to speak. What'd you say? What'd you think? Yes, um, we had some people reach out to us. It was like, you know, could we possibly touch on it? So I think it's a good subject because it's a, it's like having a whole nother person on the truck with you. Really? That's a fact. Really? All right, so I would say it's not going to be in a particular order because it's nothing that we really thought out like that. But I'll just say uh, one, I guess, would be breed size. Like, Chip is a small dog. He's a he's a French bully, so you know they're not gonna get too big, anyways. So it all depends on what type of dogs you like or what type of dog you already have. But size will definitely matter. She and our team, so we're already double occupied on the truck. So when we talk about adding a animal to it, size definitely does matter because it's almost like putting a third person on the truck. So if if space for you is an issue and you have a large dog and you are teaming, you might want to consider possibly not going that route maybe. But I don't want to tell you what to do with your loved one because, you know, pets are people love one. So if you can deal with it, deal with it. But that's one thing to deal with, that space and proximity will reduce with a large animal. So you might want to consider that before you do that too. Um, definitely fur his hair, okay? Okay. You want to get a breed of dog that doesn't shed as much. Um, he has periods where he shed, but we just recently found out that they have a uh, shed pool that we can use that we got um, when we got his um, last, we get done. last grooming done. Right. And she used a shampoo that helps him not shed as much. But when you first shampoo him, he shed for like the first three days really, really bad. And then after that, you don't see as much. And it actually works because he hasn't been shedding like he used to. At first, when you rub him, it would just be some hair that would come off. So you want to make sure that either you can deal with that or you get a dog that doesn't shed as much. Well, most animals, I think, want to shed anyway. But I would say also you want to make sure whether or not, uh, I guess, your pet is long-haired or short-haired. Mm -hmm. Some of that can kind of help. Right. But, I mean, shedding is going to be shedding. It definitely comes with having an animal especially a dog so to speak so mm -hmm. that's another thing that's definitely one right there right. shedding so you're gonna have to put your work in to keep your truck keep your space clean and right. free of hair because it's cracks be and crevices everywhere. it will get there right and frenchies are low maintenance you know yeah. they don't really need to be outside running taking a whole lot of walks and doing things like right. that for the most part they sleep all day they love to play they're real cuddly um what, what you call them like a latch lap lap dog they're like a lap dog so, like a, yeah. same as a teacup yorkie or something like that or any small size dog frenchies fall in that category they're right. probably on the big side of that category but they still fall in the category of somewhat of a lap dog just because they like enjoy and want attention like that mm -hmm. so that's another thing you was talking about needing a lot of maintenance or exercise right. you need to know does your breed require mm -hmm. a lot of exercise like to have a pit bull on the truck a pit bull i don't know medical terms or stuff like that but pit bulls or certain types of dog breeds need to run to run to mm -hmm. to, to display what their athleticism right. is a lot of dogs are made for that a frenchie is not a dog you'll take on a hike with you he, he ain't gonna make it you end up carrying them because he gonna stop walking on you and they they're hot tempered or cold natured so he can't take extremes one way or another. So if you have a dog that doesn't deal with elements like that, you know, 90, 100 degree days for Chip, he's outside using the bathroom right back in. He's not the type of dog that 
you would even leave outside like that for long periods of time. That's not his thing. But now, on the other hand, if you do have a dog like that, then you do want to consider that you need to take breaks more frequently so that the dog can get out. Right. You know, whether you're going to get fuel or you stopping somewhere at a rest stop or whatever, but, you know, being able to take your dog for walks and things like that. Right. Um, because I do know, even though not with him, when we had our other dog, you know, they can get bored, start eating on things, yeah. chewing on things, and um, you don't want that. Speaking of not just in such a small space. space. Uh, speaking of chewing, I was about to say another thing is uh, what type of food does your dog require? Does your dog or pet require a certain type of food that you can't get at any basic store? You know, a lot of times I try to get grain free. Gracias, senorita. Texas heat. Oh, yeah. What? I don't know about this Texas place, man. I love it, but <laughs> whoa. But a lot of times you'll get, you know, certain food. Certain dogs require a certain type of food. We try to stay with a grain-free uh, uh, regimen for him. You know, try to eat or try to feed him, I guess, what we would call more of a higher-end dog food. But sometimes you can't always get to the pet smarts in the pet code. Sometimes the parking lots won't allow it or just trying to find one period. It can kind of get a little difficult sometimes. So if you have a dog that's not required to have or doesn't really benefit from quote unquote higher end foods that you will find at specialty uh, pet stores, like I said, pet code, pet smart, and et cetera, you know, you need to know whether or not your dog can sustain off of a basic food, let's just say from a Walmart or a regular grocer, like. So, Frenchie snort, by yeah. the way. <laughs> and snore, like old men. So if you need I'll some say, rest and you're in the bed with him, you better fall asleep and they first. Fart. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like <laughs> now, an old um, man. Another thing to consider is high pet fees when you go to hotels. Oh, it's going to be there, and sometimes you might have to stay at a hotel that might not be as great because the fees are lower. Mm -hmm. You don't want him to mess up anything. Or no fee at all. Right. So, like, our favorite is Motel. Motel 6, six baby. We will keep the because, light on. Like you know that. what I'm saying? And then it depends on where you at. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the but pet the fee. The more luxury ones, it's up with $100. Yeah, 75 50 75 right. 100 bucks a night per pet. That sort of thing, or pet limits. Or oh, that's another thing, too, when I was talking about larger size animals. When you get out of the truck and you want to do hotels and things of that nature, some hotels, places, have certain regulations on pet right. size, uh, breed, because, you know, there are some breeds that people, for whatever reason, they are just have, uh, scared of. So They have noise. Um, what is it called? Like, like they Restrictions? Have, right, yeah, restrictions. Okay, like we're at the La Quinta. So they allow um, La dog and uh, your pets and everything. It's a $20 fee. For this one, I don't know how much right. it is everywhere else, but they do have like a, a, a noise ordinance in line. Like they um, right. require you not to leave your your puppy or your dog too long um, for complaints and things like this. Because right. this little one last night, well, we we stepped out for a little bit, making but, all kinds of noise. What the sign says for us is we're and in the, the lady truck. Called us. We're in the truck with Chip <laughs> every day, all day. He's with us every day. We're on the road. We live on the road in the truck. So the whole aspect of leaving him in the room while we go do anything to him is like, whoa, what's going on here? Like, one, I guess why I can't go? Because mm -hmm. he don't understand it. He People don't, don't think understand. you're a person, bro. So I don't another get it thing to consider is... Before you go too far, oh, I wanted sorry. to uh -huh. add on, like you're saying, with other hotels that are pretty expensive. Like when we first got him, we our first delivery was in San Diego. And we went to a nice resort in San Diego. And yeah, the fees was upwards of 100 bucks. But I would also say, depending on your breed too, because cute, Chip is so cute and people love him so much that a lot of times when we get to hotels and things of that nature, they waive the dog fee or don't even apply it just because they love him. So, you know, I guess if you got a little funny looking, ugly dog that people don't <laughs> look at as being cute, they may smack you just because be they don't like your dog. Because we, we got chippy here. So I don't know. So maybe maybe that has something to do with it. But go ahead. Uh, another thing, too, is consider like looking at videos and asking your groomer things that you can do when you don't have the time to get him to get them to a groomer. So we have told that we have the nail clippers. We have um, Chip, I don't want your daddy's shoe all on me like that. Um, See what we talking cut about? Cut it. 
<laughs> they also have like um you know sprays that you can spray to keep them refreshed right. and little cute uh little cotton things you could put in their ear like wipes because you know frenchies have these huge bat ears mm -hmm. and everything gets in these ears like they're like a suction cup for dirt like for <laughs> real and um you know, and another thing with that too, just it came across my mind. One time he had a tick on his butt. So keep him out of like, keep your dogs out of like high grass areas yes. when you're traveling and check them because going from state to state, if mm -hmm. you're a trucker, you know, a lot of times you might not think about it. It's like, oh, it's just, go they're just going to the bathroom. But you know, they'll get some travelers, you know, yes. and he recently had got one right on his tail. Yep. <laughs> my daughter was like, when is that? But we got it all. Well, yeah, I mean, those are just a few things, man. I'm um, I'm sure it's a million other things. What you got? Extra leashes, because we just had one of his pops. Okay. So keep some extra ones. You never know what could happen. And the little poopy bags. Poopy bags, Most places yes. going to want you to have them. Now, I mean, I ain't got to say it's going to be what it's going to be, but it's going to be what it's going to be. But if you have the little bags and you are in public places where people see, Stop people boy. be looking and watching for stuff like that. So you may get some funny eyeballs or some... When you don't have it and you just let your dog do what you do and walk off. But it and is what it is. please get your dog some toys because this is not a toy. But for him, it is officially a toy. He feels like <laughs> this is a toy. So get him a bunch of toys. Yeah. And um, we're going to wrap this video up because we want to come back and give y'all some more information mm -hmm. about pups and dogs and things on your truck. Because we got some business to take care of. Oh, so you're going to say anything like that? Okay. I ain't, I ain't know. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, those are just a few things to consider, man, before you bring a pet on the truck with you. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a bird cage strapped in the front seat in the seatbelt. Like, now really, we're close to the time to be getting put out of our room, so we gotta go. Is that late already? Yep, it's getting there. Ain't nobody even knock on the door yet. No, they knock on the door and say, you know, room <laughs> or, or, or <laughs> Yes. Whatever. You just be like, oh, we ain't ready yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, so some of those things, man. So those are just a few things to consider uh, before you bring an animal or pet on the truck, man. But other than that, to all my pet lovers out there, enjoy your pet, man. Take them with you, explore. You know, just enjoy life with them. They're a lot of fun on the truck. He, 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 we did about two years before we put him on the truck. And Chippy has definitely brought a lot of life uh, to our whole trucking situation, to our day-to-day. -day. And he just gives another element to the truck that we didn't have before. And I enjoy it. It's times where it blows it I because too. I can't do everything that we want to do. We always have to consider that we have him. So it kind of limits a lot I of stuff. A child. Well, then that's a whole other thing. But if you're going to be out here on the road with a pet, movies, just entertainment and things of that nature that you may want to do personally, you're going to have to consider your pet, you know, whether or not you can leave him in the hotel, in the truck, like all of those little things. It's things you're going to have to consider, matter. and they matter, and you're going to have to think about them before you make that leap. So, you know, they're a lot of fun. We enjoy him being with us. We get a kick out of him. We love him. And we, quote, quote unquote, borderline wouldn't have it another way. But it's times that it blows it, and, and it's almost like, man, like I wish I could just put him somewhere safe or get him somewhere safe for a few hours to go do this, that, and the third. But then you don't trust everybody with your pet either. So it's kind of a catch-22 with a little all of it. Hey. And make sure your pet can listen to you and is not a complete hard-headed, have control of your pet. You're going to need that. <laughs> oh, definitely out here on this road. Yeah, so, and keep your pet on the leash also, man. Don't let your pet run loose out here. You don't know what to expect in certain areas, certain terrain, certain other animals that's out. You just don't know. So keep your animal and pet. Keep full and total control of it, him or her. And uh, you'll be all right, man. It is what it is. But that's just a few tips, man. Things to consider before bringing your pet on the truck with you. Anything else with you, Shalene? Mm -mm, not right now. Well, that is what it is, man. Y'all know what it is. This is Boy Mo 804. And you got to find her for 1E. And this is Married to the Miles, man. Holler at us. Uh, comment, like, share, subscribe. We got some stuff on the, on the way, too. So um, stay tuned, man. Stick and stay. Y'all know what it is. Chippy, you got anything? I guess you heard that. Holla. <laughs>